Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. Today we're going to talk about baits that you should be using after turnover. And what I mean by that specifically is when you're in that temperature range, water temperature range of in the low 50s or cooler all the way to ice up, your bait selection becomes very critical in terms of how much success you're going to have on the water. And what I mean by that is you've got a lot of factors working against you as soon as your turnover happens on your lake. So turnover will happen relatively in the mid 50s, somewhere in that range. And what happens is you get a complete flip flop of the water that's in your lake. So during the summer months, you get a thermocline, the cooler water below that thermocline has very little dissolved oxygen. The fish don't generally go below that. So you're talking anywhere from 15 to 30 feet is where the fish are condensed to be. So the top 15 to 30 feet of a lake. Well, after your turnover happens, you get a big flushing of water, your thermocline disappears, and therefore the fish can pretty much go anywhere. They could be down in 100 feet of water. And for the most part, you're talking about anywhere from zero to 50 feet of water becomes the, the playing field, which means maybe double the amount of water you had during the summer months for those fish to spread out. So that's one factor that's working against you. They're spread out a lot more. Another is the water temperature will continue to drop. And as you have falling water temperatures, you have less active fish. Fish aren't feeding as much because they're cold blooded. They don't need to eat as much. And that makes it tougher to fish. And lastly, one of the main forage species, the crayfish goes into hibernation. And regardless of species, your spotted bass, smallmouth, largemouth all love to eat crayfish, but they go into hibernation when the water gets into that mid fifties as well. So it gets tougher to catch fish in the colder waters, but I've got some baits here that will help you be more successful on the water after turnover. You know, the main thing is you need to kind of replicate what the forage is for that lake. The fish become very, very picky in cold water because they don't need to eat that much. So if you're in the north where maybe your lake is a bluegill fishery, that's the primary primary forage species. Maybe you've got uh, alewife, maybe it's perch. If you're down south, maybe it's gizzard shad or threadfin shad or blueback herring. Regardless of what it is, you're going to want to try to match the hatch a little bit. But just keep in mind that the fish are going to key in much more on bait fish. You also, once you get down into that cooler water temperature, you get a lot of bait fish die off just because the fish are having a hard time adjusting to that cold water. You know, they call it, you know, a shad die off when the shad don't, don't survive well with the colder water temperatures, but it happens with every species. We have the same thing up here with Cisco. We have yellow perch sometimes don't handle it that well and you get a die off. So the fish are kind of trying to find those easy meals of the, of the bait fish that they feed on that are starting to die off. And that's what these baits are for the most part trying to mimic. So anytime I'm fishing a water that's 50, say 54 degrees or less, these are gonna be some of my primary baits. The first is a standard jig. Now I like to throw a smaller jig. Uh, and a lot of times I'll remove the weed guard like I did on this. This is just a Kitek tungsten jig, so it's a half ounce, but it's a smaller profile. I've got a three inch Berkeley Pit Boss on the back. This is gonna be one of my go-to, especially on Northern lakes or, or lakes that have a strong bluegill forage. So I'm trying to make this bait look like a bluegill, not necessarily like a crayfish. And a lot of times what I'm gonna end up doing is trying to swim this through any remaining green grass that might be left because grass starts dying off in that cold water. I might bring it by some lay downs if I can, but generally speaking, I'm gonna use it kind of like a swim jig, but I'm gonna let it go to the bottom and pop it around and make it look more like a dying bluegill. Now, you know, I'm not gonna say fish if they see it, aren't gonna think it might not be a crayfish. That's even better if they, if they want to eat a crayfish. But a lot of times in my experience, what I've seen is when fish get really dialed into certain types of forage, that's their primary, that's what they're looking for. So if the fish are really keying in on bluegill because there's no more crayfish, they're not necessarily gonna be super stoked to see a crayfish because they're not looking for the crayfish. Now, again, that doesn't mean they're not gonna eat it, but that's just my experience. But I love to have a compact jig tied on 
on those bluegill lakes. It's hard for a largemouth to resist a jig during cold water. Now, if you're talking smallmouth or spotted bass, a lot of times they'll start going real deep. Uh, you know, that 30 to 50 foot range. And that's where I love to throw a blade bait. You guys know I love blade baits. Uh, this is one of my favorite. This one is a, a jackal knocking jaw. Uh, this is the half ounce size. This is just a, it's a, a blade bait is a great bait to fish deep water. It, it's one of the most efficient baits that you can use for deep water areas. It just generates strikes, it generates big strikes, and you can just cover water quick. And last but not least, every time you raise and lower this on the bottom, it looks like a dying shad or a dying cisco or a dying bait fish, whatever that may be in your lake. But that's what the fish are looking for. So when this sits on the bottom, a lot of times they think that's just a shad that's dying and they're going to go over and eat it. And that's why one of the biggest tips I can say anytime you're fishing a blade bait, if you know you're in the area where there's some fish, let it sit on the bottom dead stick it. A lot of times those fish will come and pick it right up off the bottom. You know, another one that I absolutely love is just a swim bait. This is just the 3.8 Berkeley Power Swimmer. Whatever your favorite boot tail swim bait is, is a great bait to have tied on during that cold water period. Generally speaking, what I'm doing is I'm putting it on as light of a head as possible. That will still allow me to fish as deep as possible or as deep as I need to get. You know, that's one of the biggest issues is trying is keeping a swim bait down in the strike zone, because again, these fish are so lethargic, they're not looking to chase. You know, most people would say, well, throw a jerk bait. A jerk bait's a great, great cold water bait. One of the best cold water baits out there. But I can't get a jerk bait deep enough to the wintering fish a lot of times. And I can't draw them to come 15 or 20 feet off the bottom to eat that jerk bait when they're in a wintering phase. Now, down south, or I'd say from the Ozark region south, where you have water temps, like really cold water temps or upper 40s, a jerk bait still got a good drawing power. But you come up here and throw a jerk bait when the water is 48, 46 degrees, you're not going to get nearly as many bites as you will if you're throwing a swim bait deeper because those fish are already in their wintering phase, almost like a hibernation state, and therefore they're not that aggressive. The last one, again, is another bait that I really like because it mimics a bait fish and it's this Berkeley vibrato. And it's very much like a, a crossover between a jigging spoon and a blade bait. So you can fish this vertical, you can cast it. It's got a very good fall to it. It's not similar to like a, uh, a blade bait. It's much more similar to a jigging spoon. And therefore, if I'm fishing 35, 50 feet, maybe over suspended trees down south, I'd much rather throw this than a blade bait. A blade bait to me is a very good bait when I know I've got fish that are glued to the bottom. But not only you know is this a good bait for doing that, but you can also do it on those suspended fish uh, like I said, if you're on a Lewis Smith Lake and you've got wintering fish that are down over suspended trees, give the vibrato a try. It's one of my favorite cold water baits, but these are it. I mean, when, and when I go out to the lake, these are it. These are what I have tied on. Can you catch fish on a drop shot? Absolutely. Can you catch fish on a Ned rig? Yes, but I'll be more efficient and have more success on the water with these four baits. That's why I always have them tied on when I go out. So give them a try. If you're not using these, I really think you should, especially after turnover. So when your water temperature is falling and below the mid 50s, it only is going to get tougher at that point. And these are ones to try. So give them a give them a whirl, guys. I'll put the link in the video description for you if you want to check them out. Otherwise, if you enjoyed it, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I'm going to get back to fishing.